again, is from the beginning of time. Years ago, the, uh, the clerk of courts um, always probably billed, but, but the system and um, the um, Ohio Revised Code never allowed the clerk of courts or, 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 the clerk or the courts system per se to ever collect to use any type of collection agency. A few years ago, legislation was passed to allow us to hire a collection agency, and that has helped tremendously. Um, the only tool we had available, and this was all 88 counties, was you know, we, we had a, a system in most of our software systems that allowed us to bill three times, and then we sent a prosecutor's letter basically threatening, you know, that w that they were going to pursue the matter. But most of the prosecutors in the state of Ohio don't have time to go after court cost collection. So, um, <coughs> like I said, we started um, a very aggressive court cost collection. We have brought back thousands and thousands of dollars. Some of these costs may be as old as um, back in the 40s or 50s. And so some of them are not even on the computer. We went on computer in um, 1989. And so um, we are still trying to collect some of these old court costs, but yes, yeah, some of them will definitely be written off, and we will. We are slowly working towards having a clean, clean slate, and by that I mean uh, we will know which ones are uncollectible. We also uh, try to collect from the prison accounts of people who are in jail. There, there are minuscule amounts that come in, but we do follow that process, and we have brought a lot of money into the general fund. And some of those are uncollectible. For instance, if someone's in, in prison for, you know, maybe for life and, and they're not even uh, scheduled to, to, to come out of prison for 25 to 30 years, uh, you know, I will write up a, uh, make a list of the, of the court cases and the names and the judges will put an order on basically saying that those costs are dismissed because we know they're ver very much so uncollectible. But we have gone back and, and, are, and we're still in the process of trying to collect some of the old costs. What kind of technological advances do you think there, that are out there could improve the work clerk's office? Well, we're pretty excited about what has happened. Um, the auto title office, uh, we had an upgrade in our system a couple years ago, and we're looking to have another one soon, and that will be for the whole state. That will be for every title office in the state of Ohio. Um, we also started imaging in the auto title office, which is great because uh, it's not a really a problem in our office where we keep seven years of titles and we, we have, we're fortunate to have at least enough room. We have the shelving uh, around the whole office, but it will um, give us the ability to probably destroy those titles and have them available electronically if and when we need them. Uh, the legal office, we have um, just purchased a new software system. We went live in the fall of um, 05, and um, we're real excited about it. It's uh, been a great system, and, and, it, and it always uh, improves. Um, the county has, um, a great IT department and in the court system we have our own IT department and our two guys that work for the court spend a lot of time with our uh, software vendor and as, as I explained before two of my employees just went to a, a seminar last week and, and that really explains all the changes and, 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 and also we uh, express our concerns of what we'd like to see happen. We're real excited because uh, in October we should be going live. We just purchased a system for imaging and scanning. So um, I've been microfilming all along, but the imaging and scanning will make sure that none of our documents are lost. We'll have them um, available instantly to everyone in the court. They'll be um, available online to us, not to the public right away. But our, our index and docket has been available to the public, and I've uh, that was a, a, a step in the right direction technologically uh, after I became clerk. But uh, we're, like I said, ex excited about the imaging program and hopefully to have a workflow system that goes um, to goes that goes with that system. Right now, I don't think we all, any of us know what that workflow will be. It'll be a matter of getting the imaging going, and then as time uh, progresses, we will find out. Uh, our close-knit uh, contact with the court, what the court actually needs and how we make that workflow operate better amongst our offices. Because right now we're, we're shuffle, we shuffle paper and we shuffle files. So we'll probably be able to save some of that running around with the files and the paper because uh, the judges will be able to pull that right up on their screen and know instantly as soon as we have something filed and docketed. I, um, I would have, <coughs> excuse me, I can clear my throat. <coughs> 
I, I would have to say that the, probably one of the most pe important pieces of technology that a clerk of court's office would want to rely on is uh, scanning. Um, I had the pleasure of working in the Cuyahoga County Prosecutor's Office and using their brand new scanning equipment and it was just so fast and efficient. We were able to scan six boxes of documents that ordinarily would require storage. So you're saving, saving money by scanning those documents. So I think that is very important. When you ask about specific softwares though, um, I would have to say I've looked at the software that Lake County and Lucas County both use and I believe they used the same one. I was very impressed at, at how well and how smooth an office can transition from, from paper to paperless. And they have really taken the lead for the, for the state of Ohio. And in my eyes, I've actually gone on and done the research to check what are the other counties using. And I think that's one of the first places we should check before we try to implement something that's totally different and um, not going to be something that everyone else is going to want to use. So I, I think that's, uh, I, I have to commend both of them. I think they've, they've selected uh, very good project programs for their offices. Um, Bonnie, if you're elected clerk of courts, what's the first thing you're going to do on January 2nd? And uh, Denise, if you're reelected, what's the first thing you'll do on January 2nd, starting with you, uh, First Bonnie. thing I'm going to do is mm -hmm. introduce myself to the staff. <laughs> um, I've, I've met, I've heard a lot of good things about the staff. Um, I've, I've met some of them. Um, I really think we need to go in and reorganize what's most important in there. And it's going to start by going to the budget, looking where, the, where, where things have had shortfalls, going and, and checking um, what's been in process, checking each job to see, make, making sure each job is functioning at its best, and then taking what, what needs to be done and reorganizing that, set, taking the most experienced people to, create, to staff the projects that need to be corrected, and then bring and bringing in um, new people to fill those gaps, so that there's a smooth transition and no interruption of service, while we go from paper to paperless. So it's 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 going to be a process, but I think it's something I can accomplish within four years. You know, we've waited 12 years and not seen it yet. So um, I just don't think we should have to wait another four, you know, to be disappointed. Okay, and Denise, what's your first priority on January 2nd, if you should be reelected? Well, after the holidays are over, uh, we get back to business as usual, and uh, our business as usual is making sure that all our documents in the legal office are proce processed timely, given to the court. We usually have a little bit of a backlog just because the holidays, um, the way our, our um, paperwork um, is uh, processed as we open the mail so when we have a holiday we usually have a little bit more mail so we're always trying to play catch up after the holidays because we've had a few days off uh, over Christmas and New Year's and now uh, we work hard to try to, to keep our documents up to up to speed and um, we will continue technologically and continue advancing as far as um, our imaging project um, our software system and and also our microfilm. Uh, hopefully, after the imaging process is in process, we will be starting to send what is imaged right to microfilm instead of doing a separate microfilm program, which we are doing right now. So we're excited about all the new changes um, that are happening, and um, I think it's I think it's going to be pretty exciting. But yeah, that is um, that is what we'll be doing. We also uh, have a, a continuous cross training. My office. Uh, is large enough where um, it's important um, that uh, everyone knows what the other person is doing because if someone is off sick or on vacation, the documents can't sit. They have to be processed in a timely manner. That's great. Manner. It has to be the last word. Thank you very much, Bonnie Cavanaugh and Denise Kaminsky for being with us today, candidates for a clerk of courts in Geauga County. You can read about all the off, uh, offices and all the candidates and all the races uh, seven days a week in the News Herald, and you can. Get some other information by looking at www.news-herald.com on your computer. <laughs>